Let's see. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. We are officially live on this Saturday morning. And this is April 18th, which is a Saturday morning. And today I am feeling better than yesterday because yesterday I had a slight headache. If you guys were on live yesterday, you guys knew I had a slight headache I woke up with. And uh, well, I was able to uh, get through the day. And uh, today I'm feeling great, feeling refreshed, got the coffee. We're ready to rock and roll. Um, so I'm going to wait for some of my regulars to show up here. I can see that we're starting to get some people in the live here. So that's good. Let me know if you can hear me and see me uh, because I am doing a little bit of a different uh, setup here today. I'm using a different camera over here. My audio should be similar to what it's been, but let me know. Um, Karen, good morning to you. Coffee in hand. Happy Saturday, Karen. How are things going in your world? Just curious. And yeah, um, Karen, if you can let me know, because I see that you're on, there's a bunch of people coming on, but um, I see that you're commenting. Can you let me know how is the audio? How is the video today? My internet is back up and running, so that's a good. Fingers crossed. Seems like they got it fixed. Uh, we had some major issues here in our neighborhood, a lot of drops in the signal over time. Um, so uh, yeah, so and on Instagram, if you guys, again, have any questions, you guys are just uh, tuning in. Today, what I'm going to be talking about in our little coffee talk here is um, starting over. If, you know, if I had to start over, what would that look like? So that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, Paul says audio and video are good here. Awesome. Paul, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, can see and hear you really well. That's good. That means the internet connection is better. Yes. Um, and I was really struggling with the upstream. It wasn't the download speed. It was the upstream. And then they had some spikes and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, uh, all right. So to kick things off, you guys know on our coffee talk, what are you drinking this morning? Karen, I know you're drinking some coffee. Justin, what's up, man? Justin's back in the house. Good to see you back, Justin. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to, um, first off, just want to see how you guys are doing. How is your Saturday going? Is your, is your morning going well? Are you guys excited for the weekend? And you know what? It feels like every day is a weekend. It always has for me, really, because uh, I've been working from, from home for so long, but now it just seems like one day leads into the next. It's like, you don't even know what day it is. You're like, everybody's just kind of like trapped in their house uh, with this whole quarantine thing. Um, picture perfect today. Awesome, Justin. Thank you for that. I've got my other camera I'm running now too. I've got a new device I'm piping this in with, which is called uh, CamLink. It's a CamLink 4K. Seems to be processing the video a lot faster. So um, again, I like to experiment here on uh, on this show and uh, on the show, on the session of the Coffee Talk. My show isn't airing today. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but um, yeah, so today, um, okay, Craig, sorry. It's evening and in bed, LOL. <laughs> well, get a good night's sleep. Where are you located? Uh, that you're in bed right now. I'm just curious. Oh, Australia. I see Australia. Audio is good and video in Australia. Sweet. Um, how do I take my coffee? I take it bulletproof. That's how I take my coffee. And you guys know that. Um, basically, uh, butter in my coffee. I know sounds weird, but it's delicious. And I've been doing that now for probably almost three months now. And um, I love it. All right. So should we get going here? Should we get started? Uh, Michael in the house. Video looks great. The camera lens change is nice. Sweet. The light on too. I wasn't sure how that was going to be, but it actually seems like it is okay. Um, so yeah. All right. And I got to remember to look over here instead of here because that's where the camera is. And I was so used to looking here. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, midnight in Australia. Oh, uh, okay. Australia. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Justin, are you in Australia too or no? Just curious. Um, okay. So once again, before we kick off, this is our uh, coffee talk in the morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Invite your friends, your family that you want to have coffee with. Bring them over if they're interested in talking about this brand building stuff and taking action stuff and just getting stuff done and, and living a better life and enjoying the process. If you know anybody that's interested in that, send them on over, have them, uh, you know, hang out with us in the mornings talking about this type of stuff. Um, and if you guys have anything you want me to talk about in an upcoming ask 
not ask. It could be an ask Scott session in our coffee talks. Let me know. Um, I'm hoping the lighting is going to stay true with us right now. I've got some sunlight coming in now, which is interesting. It's been a little rainy here this morning. Uh, carrot juice for Salama. What's up, Salama? Glad to have you back. Oh, Justin, you are in Australia. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, cool. So here we go, guys. All right, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into this, this whole thing about if you were to start over again, what does that look like? So I titled this. I titled this from our conversation yesterday that we had. And yesterday we were talking um, how to get unstuck. Sometimes you feel as though you are trapped in a certain business or a certain part of your life because you went down that road, right? Like you, maybe you got out of college and you went to be an attorney and then found out you don't want to be an attorney, right? Or maybe you were like me and you, you know, graduated high school and then your father, um, offered to train you in the construction world. And then from there potentially own a business one day. And then that doesn't end up working out. Like, so whatever it is, we are talking about situations like that. And I forget who said it. It might've been Salama. It might've been you that said, uh, you know, what would you do if you were starting over today? What does that look like? And, um, I'm going to give you exactly what that looks like. And it's funny because I'm going through a little bit of, I've been going through a pivot now for probably about two years, to be honest with you. Went from like, you know, the Amazing Seller podcast was all about Amazon selling because that's what I was doing. And I still am doing that, by the way. It's just not my whole focus. Um, and then from there, we went into more of like e-commerce, still physical products. And now we've kind of evolved even further to what I've been doing now for a long time. And that's like just getting a brand built and established in a market and then monetizing in a variety of different ways. But now that I've done digital products, I've done advertising and I've done physical products, it gives me that skill set. So that's one key thing I want you to take away from anything that we ever talk about is whatever you're doing is really building a skill set that you will have forever. So you're really future proofing yourself. That's what you're doing, right? So, so never look at something you're doing as a waste of time. It's never a waste of time if you are trying to learn something to better yourself or you're testing something on maybe a niche that you're not 100% sure you're married to. Like you're not really wanting to build this thing forever and that's okay. But to get out of your own way to just do it, it's more important to do that. And then that way there you get those results. So what I'm doing is like pretend like for a minute that I was to just strip everything away. All right, everything away, but I still had everything that I know right now. So you get rid of the podcast, which we're about to hit 16 million downloads. Like, so you, you've, you've affected a lot of people. You've got a lot uh, of attention in a market, right? Um, you got an email list, right? You've got Facebook, you know, a Facebook group of 58,000 ish people. You've got a Facebook page with 20 some thousand people. So these are just all numbers, right? But you've got all this stuff that you've built up over time. And that's kind of an advantage, right? So let's pretend that you get rid of all that. You get rid of all of that stuff and Scott just starts over from scratch. Now, if I'm starting over from scratch, I would say, even if I didn't have the connections that I have, which connections, networking, you know, establishing relationships are huge. We should probably do a coffee talk on that because that is major. Like that is huge. I just did an interview yesterday um, with um, Michael Stelzner from Social Media Examiner. Has anybody uh, listened to his podcast or anybody um, visit their blog. They've been doing it for 10 years, by the way. Um, but I, I'm just curious, have you guys heard of Michael Stelzner and have you heard of social media examiner? Just curious. He's got a great story. And, uh, I interviewed him yesterday and really about how to become well known in your industry, which is really good. Um, but I'm just curious, drop it in the comments, drop it in the comments. Let me know. I'm just curious. Um, so that interview is coming. I think it's going to air like April 26th or 27th, whatever that, I think it's a Monday or a Wednesday. Great guy, great interview. Um, I'm going to probably have him back on too to talk some um, some uh, strategy behind his recent launch and stuff to kind of get through and geek out about it. I, I love that stuff, just learning and, and kind of exploring what others are doing. Um, but um, my point in sharing this is is like, if I didn't have those connections, right? If I didn't have the network that I have now, okay, still, what would I do? 
All right. So I'm going to give you this. I'm going to, I, I wrote it down just because this morning before I got on, and this is kind of, this is kind of how I have been operating on this whole coffee talk. I come up with a topic of something that was inspired by something today, right? That, we, that we'll talk about. And that might inspire me or get me wanting to talk about something tomorrow or go, go deeper into something. That's why it's important. You guys need to go in the comments and let me know questions. Let me know what you want me to drill deeper into and I'll do it. Okay. Um, that's what this is about. So this here came from yesterday's, but, um, I wanted to just kind of, again, break down. This literally took me five minutes to type out before I got on with you. I wanted to at least have some bullet points. Um, but this literally took me five minutes. So because I've been through this numerous times, I can, I can just rattle it off. Like I know exactly what I would do. And to be quite honest with you, it's everything I'm teaching inside of brand creators Academy. It's like the exact same thing, like everything right um, now, a little bit different. If you want to be the face of a brand and we've had some conversations about, you know, should you be the face of the brand? Shouldn't you be the face of the brand? There's pros and cons to both of those. And we can talk about those now or another time, but I do believe if, if you're going to build something to make money, but also make an impact, then that might be something you're going to do long-term. If you are, then being a face of it does have its advantages, right? So if I was to start all over again and I wanted to be a face of that brand, the very first thing that I need to, number one, I need to know and I need to understand is I need to know what market am I serving? What niche am I going into? Like it, that's the very first thing, right? Now, the one thing that I would definitely do is I wouldn't go broad. I wouldn't be like, all right, I'm going to do everything fishing. I would niche it down, but I also would not pigeonhole myself into only talking about kayak bass fishing. Okay. So I would go into fishing. Okay. I would go into that broad market, but I would then sub niche it down and start to get attention in a, in a smaller segment of the market. And I'll talk about how I would do that. So number one, I would dial that in. I would know that eventually I'm going to move out of that and go more broad, but in the beginning, I'm going to go niche. Okay. I'm going to go really, really niche. Okay. Cause it's easier to stand out if you're going niche into something and then go wider later. So once I have that figured out, which I would figure that out like pretty quickly. Um, and then from there, my first thing is I need a website. I need a home base. I call this our home base in the brand creators Academy. It's a home base. What does that mean? It's my home where everything resides. All of my, all of my stuff, all of my assets, all of my resources are going to be dumped into my home base. I'm building out my home base. And over time, it's going to gradually build. It's going to gradually become a really, really good resource. Um, so I want to make sure that the lighting's okay. The sun is coming in. Yeah, it still looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so let me get back here. So first thing is, is market. But then from there, I need to build out my home base, my website. Okay. Cause that's my placeholder. That's where everything is going to go. Right. And that's where I want to invite people. I want to invite people. Come on over to my house. Come on over. You're interested in talking about bass fishing. Come on over in here, in this house, we talk about bass fishing because we're bass fishing enthusiasts right? Like that's what we're talking about. Okay. So that's number one. All right. Uh, or number two, really. Okay. The next thing is I would create a YouTube channel. If and this is me now, if I was going into the bass fishing, uh, market, okay. In the fishing market, because it's really good to be on camera. It's really good to get to connect with the people. It's also great to be able to do interviews of other people. So that's a way that I could tap into, into experts in the market and bring them to the surface. And now I wouldn't look at this as me being the expert, unless I was the expert, I would look at it as a way for me to go and, and interview other people. So I would just get a list of everyone that is, um, that is, a uh, you know, an, an expert or someone that's uh, you know, a thought leader in that industry. And I would go start contacting these people and say, Hey, can I get on, on a Skype call with you? Can I get on zoom with you? And can I pick your brain about that? Or maybe go to when we open up and we can start getting together with people, go to a, a bass tournament, and start interviewing people. I'd grab my little zoom mic here and I take it with me. I'd be like, Hey, so let me tell let, let me ask you, you came out here today. What was your strategy? How are, how did you come out here with the conditions that they are? You know, it's cloudy. How, are, how did you attack this tournament? right? That's what I would do and just interview and then boom, hit record and then hit end and then go and import those. And I would use those and I would do that. And the cool thing is, is then I'm building out my network as well in the same time, right? So I would publish that um, on a YouTube channel. 
Okay. I would do that on a YouTube channel. The YouTube video would now get embedded on my website. And then I would also write a blog post about that, about that uh, content. Okay. So home base, YouTube, take YouTube, embed, create a, uh, a blog post about it. Okay. And then the, the, the next thing that I would do, because it's working really well for us now, it doesn't, it depends on the market, but if we're talking about this market and I'm looking at these different ways that I can get more attention and let me time out here for a second. What I'm really doing in anything that I ever do, guys, is attention. If you can get attention in your market, you're, you're good, right? And attention basically uh, is really traffic, right? So how do we get eyeballs on our, on our market or in our market that leads back to us, right? How are we becoming either a leader, a pioneer, a, a, an interviewer, a reporter in our market, okay? So that's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I would do. Okay. And so, um, this one thing that I would do depending on the market is I would start to leverage Pinterest. And the reason why I'm using Pinterest, we're having really good results with it. I just checked, uh, the, the stats today in two brands that we just tested this on. And my daughter, um, Alexis, who's 24, she's actually, um, running everything on that right now. And she's doing a lot of tests and experiments. Um, it's working really well. We're getting over a hundred people now to one brand every single day. And then we're getting, uh, just under a hundred on the other brand and it's really starting to ramp up. Um, so I'm, she's got a brand that she's been building and she got like 16,000 visitors from Pinterest alone just last month. Um, so it works. So I would leverage that. The other reason why I would leverage that is because what I'm doing is I'm not creating its own content there that only resides there. I'm creating the video asset. I'm putting it on YouTube. I'm creating that video or taking that video asset, putting it inside of my blog. I'm embedding it there. So I get another use of it there. Then I'm creating a pin on Pinterest that links people over and drives the traffic over to where the home base, right? So everything is leading back. Plus Pinterest is a search engine. So if you go to Pinterest, you can look up things or you can be found in Google in a Pinterest uh, board or from a Pinterest board. So again, that's what I would do. The fourth thing, fifth thing, uh, is I would create a lead magnet. I would figure out what is the one thing that I could do to help the market right now that they would raise their hand for. Now that could be a giveaway. That could be a contest, or it could be, uh, the ultimate bass fishing guide. And I would go and interview a whole bunch of bass uh, fishing experts. I would transcribe it. I would have it edited and I'd put it into a free guide. That's what I would do. And then everything that I talk about would be about the bass fishing guide. That's my lead magnet. Okay. And anybody that's watching or listening, a lead magnet is basically just something that they would raise their hand for that they're interested in that would help them and benefit them. And then there they would become part of my attention right in the market. All right. So that's the lead magnet and that will build the email list. Okay. Now the fifth, I keep saying fifth because I added one in the beginning there, which was really, you know, the market. But, um, okay. So this one here would be number six. Um, I would then create content that always talks about the lead magnet. Now you can mix and match this. I personally would try to make it like here, right? I haven't mentioned anything about anything, um, that you guys can go download or anything like that. Because when I showed up here, I'm not necessarily like with the, the thought in mind here is that I'm showing up here. So this way here, I can get you excited or, or teach you something and then say, if you want more, go here. Now I could do this, right? And this would be natural, right? Uh, guys, if you are uh, stuck and if you need help with this, you can just go to brandcreators.com and you can grab our brand growth validation checklist. You can go there totally free. See how seamless that was? right? Now I didn't do it here because my whole goal here is not to necessarily teach you something and then have you go to it. Although some people will, right? Cause this will live on, right? This is on Facebook, but it's also on YouTube. So it's going to live on. So whether you, you watch this now, six months from now, you can still go get value from this, but also go over to the brand growth validation checklist, right? So if you're talking about bass fishing tips, you might be like, breaking down like a new tip and you're like, you know, this new tip, I just found this out. I started playing around with this idea last week. I, I took this one lure and then I added on this leader onto, and I don't know what I'm talking about as far as bass fishing, by the way. Um, so I would say that. And then I'd be like, you know, guys, this is exactly what I talk about inside of my bass fishing guide. If you want access to it, it's totally free. Just go to bassfishingguide.com and you can grab yourself a copy. Um, but this is like another tip on top of the five that I go through in there. But this one here is really cool. I think I'm going to add it to the guide too. See what I just did there? It's seamless. So I'm always going to be thinking about, 
I'm going to create this piece of content. How does it relate to my lead magnet? Right now, if you're just going to, if you're going to build a list for a giveaway or through a giveaway, then you would just use that as like a one-off thing for right now to kind of accelerate the growth, which I would do that. I would start with that and then do lead magnet after that. Um, and then from there, the last thing is monetization. How am I going to, how am I going to make money? Well, once I have the attention, I can do it in a variety of different ways. And it was funny. I had someone on the, the bigger, um, TAS group say, uh, oh, with this big update that people did, uh, you know, or the Amazon did with the associates program, you know, what does that mean for you now? Because you're kind of telling people get attention and then use Amazon associate. It's only a small portion of what we talk about. Like, it's just another thing. And by the way, there's a lot of different affiliate programs out there, not just Amazon, and they actually pay more. So it's not a big hit for us. If you were building a brand with the whole purpose of selling Amazon associate products or affiliate products, yes, that is bad. We never would say that because we diversify. So once I get attention, I'm going to go, okay, does Amazon associate stuff make sense? Even at 3%, I don't know, maybe, maybe to get my feet wet. Um, do I have enough traffic that I can turn on ads and start making money through an ad network like Mediavine, Ezoic ads, ad thrive? Maybe, right? Is there a place here that I can create my own digital product? Maybe. Can I create an ebook and sell it for $19.99? Maybe, right? So there's all these things that I'm thinking about now after we've done this. So I'm not thinking about that in the initial build, okay? Some would say, but Scott, what if you're trying to build this thing to make money right out of the gate? There's nothing that you're going to do other than buy a product and flip a product in my eyes or do a service for someone. So in the short term, let's say six months, you may have to do your job. You may have to do a side job. You may have to take old product and flip it on eBay. You know, whatever you need to do, you need to do. So if it was me and I was in that spot, then I would be like, okay, I'm going to go flip product. I'm just going to go find product. I'm going to first gut my house with all of this stuff that I've been meaning to get rid of. And I'm just going to list it all and sell it. Right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to offer to clean out my, uh, you know, my friend's, uh, garage that they've, and I'll split profits with them. Like, I'm just going to do that stuff. Then I might put, I might put an ad, uh, up on uh, a free ad, by the way, on Craigslist. And I might offer to do some local, uh, business consulting. Cause I have that skill set, by the way. So maybe I'm going to do just two or three businesses. I don't know, for a thousand bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, whatever, just to make some money. There's things that you have a skill set where right now that you might have to do in the short term in order to get your long term thing um, started and to build on it. But for me right now, that's not the case because I have set up other revenue models. So this is what I would do. And this is what I'm doing in Brand Creators Academy, other than I'm not the face of it. So you can be the face, you don't have to be the face. Um, okay, so then monetization is after we get the attention and that's it. And then the rest is going to kind of, it's going to kind of uh, figure itself out because once I get there, I'm going to have people saying like, what's the best lures? I'm having a problem with all of these types of lures because they do this, they tangle. Well, I'm going to come out with a lure that's either going to be mine or I'm going to find someone else's that doesn't tangle. Right. And then I'm able to serve it to the market or maybe have them help me build it. And then they're part of that build. Or maybe they're saying, I'm really having a tough time finding a good training on how to, uh, you know, catch bass in a pond. Then I'm going to create a mini training for $47 and I'm going to offer it to people as a digital product, right? So there's so much that we can do once we have the attention. But if we don't have the attention, you know, what, do, what are you going to do? You're going to sit here and dream up ideas, but no one's going to see it. So you either got to know how to do paid traffic, which is harder. And I'll, I'll tell you how I would do it. If I was going to speed this up, this is how I would do it. Before I do that, let me see if I got any questions here. Uh, we just went about 100 miles an hour there. I need a sip of coffee here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Salama. Yes, love it. Uh, okay, Justin says, but every time you start a new brand, you actually are starting again from scratch. This is true. Absolutely. So I just checked my numbers this morning on traffic. And we are, uh, we are going, we are on track for the one brand. And I'm not talking about the brand that's three years old. I'm talking the one that's like six months old. There's two that are six months old and both of them are growing uh, month after month as far as attention and traffic. And we already started monetizing one right now, um, which, uh, we probably should make over a hundred dollars, um, in just ad revenue from this one already. So that's good. That's a sign that we're on the right track. So, um, 
that one there is over. We've already beat the traffic numbers and we're at what the 18th right now. We've already beat the traffic numbers on both of those sites right now. We've already beat them and we still got almost a half a month to go. And then, so we're going to probably double our numbers again. So that's what we're looking at. But yeah, you're right. We are starting over and those are faceless brands. Those are not me and they're not, and you know, like me using my, my list and my attention, not at all. Um, so yes, you are right, Justin. Uh, yes, Pinterest is working so well for us too. Awesome. Great. Um, okay. Salama, would you start with digital or physical products first? Me personally, because I know my skill set, I know what I'm good at, and I know both sides of it. I personally would start with a digital product. But if your market doesn't lend itself to a digital product, then then go the physical product route, right? But physical products are harder to launch because you need the capital, right? You need the sourcing. You need all the, the logistical stuff that goes along with it, right? So there's all of that. It's actually a bigger barrier to entry for that than for you to be able to either offer other people's digital products or offer your own. So I personally would always try to find the opportunity in, in creating a digital product personally. Uh, can you please, uh, talk Pinterest and how to use it for marketing? We can do that another time. I can't really dig into all of that stuff right here. Again, I want to try to keep these somewhat short. Uh, these copy talks, because that would be a whole training session. Um, how many subscribers do you need to start monetizing on YouTube? It's a thousand subscribers. And I think it's like 24,000 minutes viewed, something like that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, you can probably, if you have, it depends on, again, not just subscribers, but how engaged are they? Um, but I mean, you could probably make a few hundred bucks a month. Um, with that. Um, and as far as like email subscribers, that's just, that's a hard thing to nail. Um, as far as like how many visitors I look at how much traffic we're getting to the website and to the blog, that's different. If we get to 10,000 page views, page views, um, then we can start to monetize. And, um, I mean, you can, you can get to a hundred dollars a month, $500 a month. It just depends on the advertisers that are willing to spend for those ad networks. Um, and the products that you're offering. You know, if you're offering a thousand dollar affiliate product, even if it's a 3% commission, it's still not bad, right? Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Well, I like that one, Derek, what is your best way to create audiobooks? Um, love that. I've done it a few different ways, but if you're going to do like really, really like professional, um, like audible professional, like that's what I did for this book. Um, the take action effect. Which, by the way, if you haven't picked up a copy, here's my little shameless plug, takeactioneffect.com. Go grab your copy. Go grab your copy. Um, but seriously, uh, I recorded this in a studio, and um, it was like a three-day process to record it. And then from there, it was probably about a four-week process for them to do the editing, and it cost a good chunk of change. Um, now, this one, which is the playbook, um, this one here, I recorded just as if I was doing a podcast. And uh, this one here, we actually, this here, the book here sells for $4.99. There is a, uh, what we call an order bump and you can get the audio book for $9.99, right? And all that was, was me sitting down and recording um, this, right? So it's professional, but it's not like audible professional, meaning you have all of the requirements that they require and all of that. So that's the difference. But I don't think you necessarily need that quality at first. And I just think you need it to be there. Like it could be you just sitting down reading that book and there you go. People just don't want to read it. They want to listen. So you want that option there. Uh, CPA is also a great way to monetize a site. Yes, that is true. Um, send me your cheat sheet. Uh, what cheat sheet, Derek? Um, let's see. Alexandra, what's up? What's up? Oh yeah. Good to see you. Good live today. Thank you for that. Hopefully you're all well and safe, Alex. Um, I've been thinking about you. Uh, so you believe in branding your product first and build that up and not just sell products, or is it better to label a product with your name and put your label on it? I, see, I don't think about it that way, Derek. Again, a lot of people get stuck here because they're like, here's the product. Here it is. I'm going to call this whatever. Zoom, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, what is it called? It's called the handy recorder, right? H one handy recorder. So the zoom H one handy recorder, 
Like it's a product. What does the product do? It allows me to record audio into it, right? Who is this for? This could be for a lot of different people, but let's just target the podcasting community. It's a great travel mic. You can throw it in your backpack. What comes from this? You being able to build a podcast, be able to get in front of people, see what I'm, see where I'm going with it. It's not about this. It's about what this does for the market. That's what it's for. Um, so yeah, I, I don't start with the product. Never. I never start with the product. Um, I start with the market and what they need and what they want. And then I try to deliver value to them and get attention. And then the other stuff that way, it, it also allows you to be more nimble. It allows you to, to really be able to have, uh, the flexibility to, to create a digital product, create a physical product. You're able to do that. Actually, uh, Alexand Alexander that was on or Alex, uh, as I call her, um, who has a blog, very well-known blog called travel fashion girl. And she basically took her information from her affiliate sales and turned that into her own product. But after she had the attention. She didn't say, I'm going to start my business selling packing cubes. Didn't do that. She said, I'm going to get attention in the travel uh, for women market. And I'm going to then offer, you know, and do reviews about other products and get traffic, even if they don't buy from me. And she's done that. And then the products come. So that's kind of, you almost got to flip the way that you're thinking it there. Um, hopefully that helped. At what point did you hire someone to help your business? How many people in your staff? Uh, it took me a while. Uh, my wife has been always a part of my team. And actually, she's becoming more of a team a player now um, for myself. For She's doing a lot of outreach for me. Um, and she's more or less like an executive assistant for me where she's doing a lot of the relationship building on the networking side for me. And that was just done probably around, I don't know, the past couple of months. And we're really starting to, to get serious about that. But as far as like team, it's very, it's very lean and that's on purpose. Um, I personally like to have the ability to have other people work from anywhere in the world, but also where they are getting paid per uh, performance likes or per job. This way here, it's not an hourly. I don't have to babysit people. It's like you get the job done or you don't. Right. Um, so I would always say, don't rush into that. You always want to know what it takes to do the process. So a lot of times I'll build an SOP, a standard operating procedure, and then I'll hand that off, right? I'll hand that off to someone. Then they have it. Um, but I wouldn't speak, I wouldn't rush that. Uh, okay. Um, would six months be a good to build free content? How do you speed that up? I'm going to talk about how to speed that up. Um, but yeah, that would, that's, a, that's enough time. And, and again, it's enough time if you do something during that time. If you're just going to post once a month, no, it's not going to work. I'll be the first to admit that. You need to ramp that up. You need to really set seeds in your market. That's all we're doing. We're planting seeds in our market that lead back. Um, Karen says, I'm doing three videos on Facebook and YouTube a week, two Facebook lives, three blogs a week, twice a day posts on Instagram and Facebook, starting on Pinterest, putting worksheets on website for free to gather emails, anything else I can do. No, keep doing that. That's a lot. And it sounds like you're doing everything that I would be suggesting that you do, which I know that you listen very closely, Karen, and you are an action taker. I know that too, because you were at Brand Accelerator Live and I know that you're just a hard worker. So right there, that right there equals that's, that's stuff being done, right? Like that right there will get your results. And the thing is, is being consistent. So my only thing would be like, listen, if that's going to burn you out, scale back and only focus on the things that really, really drive, um, the, uh, you know, the most potential. That's what I would say, but Hey, great job. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Derek says your cheat sheet for creating a digital product. I don't really have one. Uh, I probably should come up with something and you know, that's what I've been thinking too. I I'd like you guys' opinion on this real quick. Um, you know, I have pivoted over the years and, uh, I'm really thinking about in the future, maybe, you know, sharing that stuff. And I don't know if it'll be a product. I didn't, it might just be content. You know, how did I, how did I decide to start a podcast? How did I grow it? Um, you know, how, how am I learning YouTube right now? And hopefully, um, going to build more of my, uh, brand on YouTube. Um, so that's another thing, digital products. I've been doing that for years, guys. 
way before Amazon, way before Amazon. I built uh, a couple of uh, membership sites um, and I've done that very successfully, but it all comes down to getting the attention first, always the attention, right? So I'd be curious, uh, would you guys be interested in that? Um, Alex, uh, yeah, I learned this was a popular product two years after starting the blog. Exactly, exactly. Um, Alex, I'm curious too, where are you located right now? Are you in New York? Are you in, um, or I forget where you moved to now. Uh, are you in New York? I know you said that you were thinking about, um, hanging there, hunkering down in New York. Um, do you have independent contracts or employees? Uh, not employees. No, I don't have any employees. I swore I would never have employees. I don't know if that's, I, I always say never say never, but, um, I, I don't think I'll ever have employees. I, I came from that world with my father's business and I swore I would never go back. Uh, Mike agree. Employees treat you as a boss. Independent contractors treat you as a customer. It's true. Um, I have a recipe food blog and I'm looking for affiliate products, having issues with Amazon programs. So looking for other good affiliate programs using Google to find them. But how do you recommend finding product companies will give me to review and talk about? I, I think it's looking at people in your space that aren't major uh, brands and then going to them. Uh, and then and then basically, uh, you know, putting yourself out there, like you're looking for top products to review, like something like that. Um, but I also think you just hand plucking and kind of taking out like, uh, products in your market right now. Um, and then just start doing them and then reaching out to the brands and going, Hey, I just want to let you know, I just did a product review on your product. It's awesome. If you want to go check it out here, you're like, that's what I would do. Like a little bit of a roundup post. Um, oh, you guys got a lot of questions here today. I like this. What else should we talk about on an, on the on an upcoming coffee uh, talk? Put that in there for me too, guys. I mean, you got a lot of ideas here for me. I'm just I'm just wondering. Uh, let's see. Alex says slick a slick Facebook live setup. By the way, need that setup from my lives. Yeah, I'm testing it out, Alex. It's working pretty well, um, and I can break that down sometime for you, or I can do it for anyone that is interested. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's working pretty good, I think. But one of the big things is is my internet's back. I had a major problem with that. Uh, Salma, yes, I would I would uh, love your DIY content. Um, Derek has another one. Uh, is it better to put a lot of content and videos on YouTube? Is it, or it better to put a lot of content and videos on YouTube? Wait a minute. Um, I think it was the same question. Um, it's, it's better to put content wherever you can do it consistently. <laughs> it, it really is. Um, I always think you have to have a website and a home base. I think you have to. And then if you do YouTube, it just, it's, it's crazy not to take that and then embed it into your website. It's just like, that's a natural fit. So that would be my answer there. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Alex says super secret location. Hey, stay secret. Stay secret. I get it. Um, all right. All right. I'm going to come back to some of these. We're going to go longer today. I can tell, but I don't care. It's Saturday and, um, you know what? We can do this and we got a good, strong connection. So let's keep rolling. All right. Let me talk about how we would amplify this or how we would speed this up a little bit advanced, but it's again, something that I've learned over the years and something now that I would use if I had a little bit of money to throw at this. So let's say I had a couple grand, okay? I had a couple thousand dollars and I said, that's gonna, going to be what I'm going to use as part of my startup, okay? So what I would do is I would create video content, okay? And you can publish this on YouTube just because you're creating it, why not? Or you can do a Facebook Live like I'm doing right here, which is a great way to force yourself to produce content, by the way. And then what I would do is I would upload it to Facebook. And now you might be saying, but Scott, Facebook, isn't Facebook kind of, isn't, isn't it like, you know, uh, hard to get reach now anymore? And it is, it, it, it can be, there are some things you can do to, to increase your reach and all that stuff. One of them is just engaging with people, getting people to, to ask questions like you guys are doing here or have them comment or ask an open-ended question. Those are ways to do it. But you know what Facebook loves? They love to take your money. That's what they do. And it's okay because they're willing to put your videos in front of people. 
Now you might be saying, but Scott, that's great. And all that means you're telling me I should pay to get my videos in front of people and then they watch it and then they don't do anything. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is this. What I would do is I would take a thousand dollars and I would, add, I would, I would use that it, yeah, as far as my ad budget goes. Okay. And then what I would do is I'd create these videos that I believe from doing some research that my market is interested in. Okay. So this would be a way for me to show up to them. So I would throw, let's say $20 a day to these videos. Okay. And now my, I'm going to target specifically my market. Cause you can do that on Facebook. If you have an email list, you can upload that list and create a lookalike audience. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do there. Right? So what I would do, forget about that for a minute. is I would target people and in, in, in my market. And then what I would do is I'd start putting these videos out. Now, this is where the secret sauce is. In the background, when I'm using video and I'm pushing money ads to those videos, I'm able to see the engagement level on the videos. So if I created a 10 minute video, I can see, okay, and I can tell Facebook that I want to take people that have watched 25%, 50%, whatever, 10% of a video. And I want them to create a custom audience. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm building a list of people inside of Facebook that I can keep showing up in front of and not show up in front of the people that aren't paying attention. So if you watch a video on Facebook and you, you scroll and you watch for like five seconds and then you keep going, that's counted as a five second view. Okay. But if you get on that video and you watch for let's say two minutes, three minutes, and that's 20% of that video or 25% of that video. Now you become a warmer lead or a warmer person in the audience. So now what I can do is I can take a piece of epic content and I can drive people to my blog by paying for it, but I'm also able to show up in front of these people. So now, now these people are going to be like, wow, I seen Scott did a fishing video yesterday. Wow. There he is again. He's out now at a pond. Oh wow. Now he's out with his son at the lake. Oh wow. Now he's here. And the reason why that person thinks that I'm everywhere is because I'm only targeting that person after they've done uh, or after they've engaged with the video by how much they've watched, right? So I would take $1,000 to basically get me out there, get my brand out there to the right people and build that audience, okay, and that custom audience that would drive people to my blog and to my website and to my YouTube or wherever, right? They're going to get in my ecosystem. Then what I would do after that $1,000 is spent, I'm going to start to learn out of maybe, let's say I shot 10 videos and they're 10 minutes each. I'm going to put different pieces of content with different concerns, different struggles, different things that they might want to know about. And I'm going to look at the engagement on those videos and I'm going to go, that one did well, that one didn't do well. That one did really good. That one did good. Not so good. And I'm going to make more videos about the stuff that people are engaging with. So this one here, I've noticed already, you guys are resonating with this. So if I was looking at this as an ad unit, I would look at the one I might've did on mindset stuff. And it was like, it was okay. But this one here shot through the roof. I'd start doing more videos around this stuff and then keep broadening that out. So again, that's what I would do if I wanted to speed this up. So I would spend a thousand on basically setting the seeds in the market and, and really learning what the market wants and what they're interested in. Right. And then I'm going to start showing up to the right people at the right time. Um, and then I would build that audience that I have now. So imagine I have an email list, but I also have a custom audience built inside of Facebook because I put out the right bait, if you will, that attracted the right people. And so now I have this attention. So if I build this up to, I don't know, 10,000 people that have watched at least 25 and which by the way, to get these types of views, a lot of times, even at a 20%, 25% view, it's generally less than 50 cents. It's sometimes as, as cheap as 10 cents. So imagine having 10,000 people that you have in a custom audience that have watched at least 25% of your videos, and then you can just keep putting content out to them. It's like having an email list. Yes, you have to pay for it, but it's like having an email list that you're like, I'm going to shoot a video and get it out to all these people that I know are interested in what I have to show them and share with them. You see what's happening there, right? So that's what I would do. Okay. And actually that's what we are doing, not in all brands. Um, but that is what we are doing. Um, so that's what I would do. Okay. If I was going to kind of accelerate this thing, right in the other brands that I'm talking about in brand creators, 
uh, Academy, we're not doing that as of right now. Okay. We're not doing that yet. Um, we may, we probably will just not yet. Um, because I wanted to do that more organically. Um, but if I want to speed this up, that's what I'm going to do. Right. And I'll, I'll be honest, like for, um, the podcast stuff or, uh, you know, let's say it's, uh, maybe it's an event or something like that. I could basically just go through all the videos. Even this Facebook live is tracking how long you are on. I know it's a little creepy, but if you think about it, Facebook wants to give you more of what you're interested in. So if you have watched 25% or more of this Facebook live, which will turn into a live or it'll be an organic video or a uh, evergreen video here, I can run ads to this if I want to, or I can just take the people that have watched at least a certain part of this. And then I can show up with another video and it could tailor this message. So it would be like, like today we're talking about starting over. And I know that a lot of people are asking about maybe digital products, or maybe people are asking about, um, building an email list or, um, you know, how would you start a podcast? Maybe I would shoot a video that would target only people that watch 25% or more of this video. And I'd be like, you know, uh, Tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing exactly how I've built a digital product business from scratch. I'm going to give you the five steps that you need to follow. And it would only target you, right? And you'd be like, yeah, I want to know more about that, right? Because we we took the data off of this. Anyway, getting a little techie here, a little geeky, but I love this stuff. Um, and it's just what we have the ability to do as marketers. But again, it's a skill set that I've learned and that I've built and that I know how to use. So just understand that these are skill sets that we're building. Okay. Let's answer some questions. Um, this has been fun guys. I love talking about this stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Derek says, thanks. I'm going to concentrate on digital products versus physical products to start. I would, if your market lends itself to it, why not? And, and if you have questions on that, let me know. Like I'll do more content on that. Like I just said, I, I want to give you more of what you want because I feel like you are, and everyone here right now are interested in my thinking, my methodology, right? And so because of that, why not teach more about that and share more about that? I've got the experience. I've done it. And if I don't have it, I'll go find it and we'll share it. Right? So that's, that's all. Um, Tristan, Hey, Tristan, uh, how to get over the fears of being the face of your brand. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Uh, are you afraid that you might look foolish? Are you afraid that you might make mistakes? Totally normal, by the way. I have had that. I have kind of lost that uh, because I kind of got to the point where I was like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I only care about the people that get it, right? And there's going to be people that would hop on this and go, I don't like the way that he phrases things. I don't like the way that he talks, like whatever. And that's fine. You're not going to be the answer to everyone. You only want to resonate with people that you truly want to be around. So just think about it that way. So I'm, I'm imagining right now that I'm hanging out with, with you, Tristan, right? I'm hanging out with you right now. Like if we were sitting down, I don't think you're judging me, right? And so there are going to be people that judge you. You are going to get people that are going to be haters. They're out there. They're going to happen. I'm telling you that right now, um, but you, you got to be able to get yourself through that if you do want to be the face. And I do think if you want to be the face, there's a couple of things to think about, but I think there's a huge advantage to it because no one can replace you. No one can replace you. No one can be you. No one can be your personality. No one can be the quirkiness. Like anything that you are, you should let it shine through. I believe that. Um, but yeah, let, let me know, Tristan, what are you, what are you afraid of? Is there something I can help you with? I, I will. Um, Mike, what video camera are you using? This is the Sony, uh, Q5100, I believe, which took me a little while to get it to work. Um, because you can't record on this, on the actual SD card because it overheats crazy. Um, so I'm just using it for a live streaming or a video recording for content. I'm not using it for, um, taking it on trips or anything like that. Um, I finally got it to work. Um, let's see, Derek, do you prefer podcasts or video broadcast? Uh, both. Um, and what I like about this, I'm even thinking about if this, if this here comes out good, I might turn this into a podcast episode. I might do a little intro, a little outro, but I'll let people hear this. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, this means that it turned out pretty good. 
Uh, so um, that's the other thing that you can do, right? You can have a video and if you like the audio, you can turn that into a podcast or you can do the podcast, record it on video. And if you think it makes good video, you can put it on YouTube. Um, so I think both, uh, I do prefer if I was to choose either, or I think podcast for me, because I can do it very quickly and I don't have to worry about like lighting. I don't have to worry about camera. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And a lot of times people want to, you know, do I look okay? Is this a good camera angle? Uh, you know, women, especially, I mean, I know my, my wife, you know, wants to make sure a lot of times, like even in, in being in photography business, it was like, make sure that you shoot women, you know, shooting down versus up. Like there's just little things like that and you want to make people feel comfortable. Um, so anyway, uh, I prefer audio, but I also like video a lot because we can do this. No, you can't replace this for you and I, you and I to be able to sit here and hang out and get to kind of interact with each other face to face. It's pretty powerful. Uh, talk about if there's any niches to avoid example, uh, health related. Yeah, that would be one probably because Google does have some stipulations there and some guidelines and some algorithm things that you might want to, um, be careful with, um, there, but, um, yeah, we could totally do that. I like that. That's a good idea. Uh, let's see here. Salomon, please do a coffee talk on how to launch a book. Oh, I like that one. Uh, a physical, like a, a literally a published book, like a self-published, like book book or more of self-published book guide that helps people with one specific thing in their, in their, in, in your market. So in, in, in the case of fishing, would it be like how to catch more bass, right? Would that be the thing? Cause I do think you should probably make your first one really targeted. Um, that solves a one problem. Um, uh, let's see, why did you create down downloadable books versus physical? Great question. I did, um, you can buy, you can buy these physical. Okay. You can buy hard, uh, paperback, Kindle and audiobook. Um, but this is also fulfilled, um, third party. So I don't handle any of this when these, you can set that up. The problem I was having, especially when people are international, people weren't getting it. They want it now. And so I found that people don't really care if it's paper or if it's digital. Um, I always recommend, like if you bought one of these for $4.99, you're going to see a video of me saying like, Hey, congratulations on grabbing this. Now do me a favor, go to your local office supply store and print yourself a copy and get it bound. Right. And then that way there, you got a physical copy. So I do encourage people to do that because I do believe that having a physical copy is pretty powerful. Uh, let's see. You got a lot of knowledge to share during the coffee talks. I do. I can sit here for days. I've been doing it a long time though, Derek. And the thing is, I want to shortcut this for a lot of people. Um, and that's really my mission here moving forward. And it's all about evolving and growing. Like I'm still learning and I'm still connecting and I'm still wanting um, to make a bigger impact. So that's what drives me. Uh, do live YouTube videos perform the same way as recorded? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think uh, having YouTube live does something to their algorithm that I think could help, but I, it's too early for me to even tell. Um, so I'm still, I'm still learning the YouTube side of things. I'm playing with things. We, uh, we have some experiments happening right now. Um, do you use Google ads too? No, I don't. Um, my good, uh, friend and, uh, and, uh, team member, uh, Chris Schaefer, uh, is, uh, is a very well seasoned Google ads person. He could answer that more. Um, my biggest block integrating what I learn. Yeah. So taking action, right? So Mike. Do you have a copy? I think you do. If you do, read it. We got to get you to take action, man. It's all about taking action. Uh, Gerald, I'm going to look for a good camera and mic for my kitchen to do a YouTube cooking show for my blog. Yeah. Um, don't get hung up on the quality so much. That's one thing I see people getting hung up on and it, it's paralyzing. So my recommendation when you start is your camera on your phone. Just get a tripod. The main thing that I would say is make sure that you get a microphone that makes your audio good, right? It gives you good audio because audio is really what can annoy people if you have bad audio. Um, so try to get the audio right. But as far as like having that can hold you back because you're like, I want to make sure I have the perfect camera. I want to make sure that all the settings are right. Like it can really hold you up. You want as much point and shoot as you can get in the beginning um, and don't overthink it. Um, and for cooking, you'd probably want like overhead shots too. Um, so 
you might just want to shoot here at first talking about what you're going to do and then just do an over the top camera view and just keep it simple. Uh, Michael, in another session, it would be interesting to know what equipment and software you primarily use for creating videos, podcasts, lighting, camera, audio setup, etc. I love that. I love that you guys are asking about that because honestly, I see myself going down that path, you know, in the near future. Um, because I think I don't, I don't know. It's one of those things. I was talking to Michael Stelzner about it yesterday. It's almost like you think other people have already put out that content and why would you, why would you want to put it out there when someone else has already done it? But there's different ways that I've done it. There's different things that I've learned. And one of the biggest things that I am really excited about teaching and sharing is really audience building. Like I've done it in numerous industries and in numerous businesses. And that's what lights me up is helping people build the audience, building the attention. So yeah, I would be more than happy to do that, Michael. So, um, you know what, send me an email too, uh, Scott at the amazing seller.com and just put a little nudge in me. Let you know, just remind me of that. I would love to do that. Uh, the deceased Kentucky, uh, fried chicken guy is the face of Kentucky. Died. Yeah, you're right. So you can do that again. Um, the biggest thing with being the face of the brand is if, if it's not iconic like that, um, is if you were ever to sell the brand. So that's why I always kind of, I always tell people don't, don't make it all about you unless you are able to basically replace you with another face or you have contributors that feed into the site. Cause that's big. Um, Derek, uh, is WordPress a good place to host your blog or paid services like Ghost. I like, uh, I don't like WordPress as hosting. I like a, an independent one. We use, um, HostGator for most of ours. I've used Bluehost, but I like HostGator better. You can use GoDaddy. My biggest advice would be always buy your domain at a separate place than the hosting. So I always buy mine through GoDaddy. I, I kind of like park them there or I, I basically host them there. And then I will point the servers over to the host, which is usually GoDaddy. Um, both book launches. Oh, okay. Yeah. We could talk about that for sure. Uh, let's see Derek again. Yes. Nonfiction book, like self-help books to solve a problem. Um, hold on a minute here. Instagram just got kicked off. Uh, nonfiction book, like self-help books to solve problem. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Um, I could totally talk to that. I've written numerous, um, eBooks. Um, so yeah, Salama. Yeah, no, no problem. I, I appreciate you, you stopping by, uh, Tristan, I'm actually well known within my industry and I have not started video blogs or lives because I'm actually very shy and quirky and I'm, I'm not sure my personality matches the brand. And I feel like it would be a possibility that I could hurt the brand. I might just be overthinking it. I think you are. I think you should do it. Here's what I would do. I would do a Facebook live and jump on. And here's the deal. If you don't like how it turns out, you just hit delete. That's all. Um, but if you're kind of well-known in that space, people are probably looking forward to that. And I would, I would be quirky. I would be you like, why not? The minute you try not to be yourself, it becomes hard. And you like me right now, like I'm here with you guys. I'm, I, I don't think you guys are judging, but maybe you are. Um, but I'm comfortable, right? Like I, I'm okay with the way that I talk or I stammer or, you know, any of that stuff. So yeah, just, I would go for it. Uh, Tristan definitely go for it. I, you know, as, as like a little action step and I'm telling you, it could change everything. And I talk about in the book, these take action moments, like they are take action moments in your life that change everything. This could be one of those moments for you. So, you know what, write it down. Number one, write down this date, write down that you're nervous about getting on video and write down a date that you're going to do the video and do it within the next week. And even if it's for just showing up to basically hit live, whether one person shows up or a hundred people show up, don't worry about it and just cover something that could be useful and helpful to them. Like that's it. Answer questions. That's it. Um, that's what I would do. And then that way there too, you've also, also written it down and you can document that because I do believe that's going to be a pivotal uh, moment. And here's the deal. If you see that you're getting negative flack from it because they're like, oh, uh, 
you're not as professional as I thought. So I don't want to buy from you. I don't think that's the case. Um, but if that was, then just stop doing it. That's all. Um, so I would do it. Um, uh, it's better to record and post 30 videos together or one week. Uh, I think what you mean is like, should you, should you put them out over time? I think over time is always better. Uh, let's see, Derek, again, faith, uh, without work is dead. We got to take action. Just like you say in your book cover and not let the internal, um, set in and, oh, I, I see. Yeah. And we continue as we always do thinking and not doing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, please do talk on basic tech and starting making videos. Sure. I can do that. Is, uh, taking a slant on what you have seen someone else do a good idea. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, model, like why not model what someone's what someone else has done and just put your own spin on it. No one will be you. And that's just like Tristan. No one will be you. Even though there's some, there's someone else out there that might be crushing it right now. There's no one that's going to be you. That's the advantage of being the face of your brand is there's no one that can be you, but that's also, if you're going to sell the brand, it could also hurt the sale because there's no one that can be you, right? So you'd have to find a replacement. Um, so guys, this was awesome. So I have some ideas on what to do next, uh, uh, as far as like an upcoming, uh, coffee talk. Uh, and, uh, what I'll do is I will, uh, I'll go through them and, uh, we'll, we'll see what makes the most sense. If you have any other ideas for me, um, you can drop it in the comments of this, of this, uh, Facebook live or YouTube live. Um, and you can do that there. Let me know. And, uh, from there we can go ahead and, and keep these rocking and rolling. Um, these are, these are fun. And, uh, Justin says Bulletproof has a great brand to model. You're absolutely right. And the way that it started is incredible. Um, and actually the, the interview that I did with Michael Stelzner, which is going to air, I believe next week or the week after he's got a great story too. Uh, you know, because it didn't start with him being the social media guy. Um, you know, he was actually a white papers guy. And then from there graduated into what he's doing and it's just kind of transcended him. Um, Keep bringing these talks. Very informative. Yeah. Well, hey, bring a friend next time, Derek. Bring a friend. Um, if you guys can do me a favor, though, seriously, uh, invite a friend, someone that you think would get value from this. I want these to be the right people, though, right? Like, you, you know what I mean. Um, so make sure that you invite someone that you think that would get value from this, um, contribute to this, and, and I'll keep coming back. So 10 a.m. Eastern time, okay? And I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to do a Sunday session. And, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk more on this and other things to help you get out there and just really create the ultimate business that will support your lifestyle and your dreams. All right. So guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up as always. Remember, take care, take action, and I'll talk to you soon.